Welcome to the Fittish Dad Podcast. I am your host, Caleb Bauer. I'm super excited to dive into this first episode of the Fittish Dad Podcast. And I'm really just excited to introduce myself to y'all uh, and to any future listeners that listen in on this um, to really just explain what the purpose of the Fittish Dad podcast is to see and check out if it's for you. So the Fittish Dad podcast is really born out of my own heart and my desire to help people of all ages, all shapes and sizes really begin to see the importance of fitness and health in their life. So the purpose of the dad, the fit ish dad podcast is to connect fitness, running and nutrition and how important it is to your physical, mental and spiritual health. So we'll spend a lot of times talking about uh, fitness. Uh, a lot of times talking about specifically running because my big thing is running though I have a, a, a wide experience with a lot of different type of fitness uh, and fitness activities, which we'll talk about, um, and nutrition, and how those all play a key part in your physical, mental, and spiritual health, which all play a key part in one another. You can't have good physical health and lack in spiritual health and expect to have a good and balanced life. And so... Super excited to get into all these topics with y'all in the future, but today I just want to share a little bit about myself so you know who I am and who you're listening to. Like I said, my name is Kayla Bowers. I am 28 years old and I live in Rockwall, Texas, which is just outside of Dallas. I grew up in this area my whole life um, and really just love calling Texas home. Uh, I love I love being from Texas. I know that's a big point of pride for a lot of people being from Texas, you know, bigger than Texas, everything like that. I got it tattooed right there. That's yeah, Texas, you know, Texas born, Texas raised. Love it. Um, like I said, I grew up here. Um, I played every sport. I think I like dipped my toe in every sport imaginable. Played soccer growing up, uh, like dabbled in baseball. Um, uh, was really good at basketball, was really good at soccer. My favorite sport um, was football. Uh, and I loved football and I was pretty good at football. I played in college for a little bit before I got injured and ceased to play um, in college. And that's a you know whole other story that we'll get into another day. Uh, I could spend a whole episode on just my relationship with football in those years from high school into college and just a lot of formation of a lot of um, core beliefs and personality traits that I still carry with me to this day, both good and bad. Um, But we'll get on on that in a later episode. But played football, um, went to college, you know, played football in college, um, got hurt, stopped playing football, stopped going to college, moved back home, uh, got really depressed. I struggled with drinking and I struggled with pills um, and and just a lot of different substances and a lot of different addictions, super depressed, uh, no purpose in life, and really was lost until um, I was about 20 and I decided to um, rededicate my life to the Lord and really um, actually live out the things that I believed, the things that I had read and heard growing up, um, the things I had read in the Bible myself and really begin to live out the things that I believed to become the man I wanted to become. Um, and in that process, I met my wife, Brooke, married her, which was the first greatest decision, second greatest decision. First one was obviously was rededicating my life, um, which led to my second greatest decision which was getting married to Brooke, which then eventually led to my third greatest decision, which was having a child named Samuel, which I'm sure y'all will hear a lot about through the rest of my days because these are my favorite things in this world. But um, 
a lot of good stuff was happening. Um, and, you know, kind of, I, I, I like remained active, but a lot of like the competitive side of me, I really just kind of put on the wayside, mostly because I didn't know what to do with it. And also at the time, um, I'd always equated my competitive side to being not good or not conducive um, to a, a Christian worldview, um, to be a man of God. But I was wrong, which I later found out. But I still struggled with a lot of things. I still struggled with uh, pornography. I still struggled um, with my sense of self and depression and anxiety, just a lot of different things. Um, that I fought silently and every once in a while it would rear its ugly head and peek out, uh, and remind me that I, uh, was not as great as I wanted people to think I was. And a lot of ups and down, lots of ups and down until about, let's see. Oh, wow. 2021 now. So it's been three years. It feels like it's only been like 30 days, but three years, um, in 2021, um, Technically, actually, in December of 2021, right? December of 2020. No, it was December of uh, 2021 when um, my pastor, uh, who I had grown up with, who I saw as like a, a spiritual grandfather, um, passed away. And it was completely devastating to me and really sent me into an emotional uh turmoil and, and I was just emotionally a mess um and, and really gave me just the spiral back into depression and anxiety and unsure what to do with it questioning a lot of things about myself um and at that time I really had to find out who um I was the man I wanted to be um who I believe God to be um, and how um, I was going to live out those beliefs in my everyday life. Um, and through that whole process, I found running. Um, it, I had like run a little bit just kind of casually before. And I, uh, you know, I, I ran track in high school because I was fast. And so I hated long distances because I don't you know, uh, I'm a sprinter, you know, but, um, as I got older, I don't know, one day I just started to start going for runs. And within like the first five days, I was like, you know what? I'm going to run a marathon. And so the Dallas Marathon was in like six months. So I signed up for it. And and I ran that first marathon. And ever since then, it's a, uh, a habit I have not been able to kick. Um, absolutely love it. Uh, and, and like the crazy versions of it. Um, I have done a bunch of half marathons, um, you know, a couple dozen 5Ks, uh, done three full marathons and one ultra marathon so far. And I have my uh, next race, which is in October, which is a 50 mile race here in Texas, uh, in Palo Duro Canyon that I'm training for, um, that I'll talk about a lot over the next coming weeks. Um, but really fell in love with running um, and just the benefits that it brought to my life, not just physically, um, but even mentally and honestly, spiritually as well. And this is where a lot of the things I've learned over the past, uh, like I said, three years now come from um, a lot to do with running, but fitness in general um, and the, new, the, the role that nutrition and the food we eat uh, come into play, especially with our, uh, obviously physical, but our mental and emotional health. I think that's something that doesn't get talked about a lot, or, or even if it does, people don't really listen or think about it a lot is how much what we eat affects how we feel and how we think and how we see the world and how we relate to the world around us. Um, especially with a lot of chemicals and food nowadays and whatnot. Um, but so we'll get into depth on all these things in future episodes. Um, but started running and, and fell in love with it. Uh, absolutely fell in love with it. Like with like to the point where I remember after a run one day, I came home 
I told my wife, I said, I don't know how, but I want this to become my life. Like when I was like running, I was like, I want to make running like not just a ha- a, a hobby that I do or something I do for fun. Like I want, I want this to play a major role in what I do with my life. Um, you know, career wise, um, just what I spend and devote my time to just absolutely love it. Um, and deeper than all that is because I really want, you know, my, my, my biggest dream, my biggest, biggest desire with this podcast and with all the things that I do, um, is to, you know, number one, I want to inspire people uh, to realize the potential for greatness that they have in themselves. There is nothing special about me, honestly. Nothing special at all. I am, like, I would say slightly above average to average to slightly below average in every category imaginable. Like, there's not a single thing about me. I'm like, oh, this sticks out to why this person can do it and I can't. And I think I am a great like litmus test to see like, okay, if he can do it, I can do it because he is the most average person ever. So if, if he can, you know, through uh, commitment and consistency and discipline achieve these things, then I know that I can as well. Um, and I used to wish that there was something like specific. Uh, this, th- I mark this is what makes him great. Um, but there's just not, but I'm okay with that because I realize it's something where I can still do great things and people can see me do great things and go, well, if he can do it, I know I can do it. Cause I have friends that like have achieved, you know, over and above success that I look at them and go, yeah, of course he did. Like, I know why he did. Um, I said he has something special and and it's not always something that's unattainable but it's like something that's almost like genetically coded into them where I'm like they have that going for them um I don't have anything like that there's nothing that I'm like that so all I have is the grace of God and um the determination to uh not quit that is honestly it grace of God determination to not quit that is the the two beginning ingredients to achieve any success in your life. And um, so I just really want to inspire people to be able to look within themselves, find what they want to do with their life. And I'm not talking about like a job. I'm talking about what they want their life to amount to, what they want their life to mean when it's all said and done and people are standing at your funeral and someone grabs that mic and says such and such, was this person to me and this is what they did and this is how they affected me. And everybody says, that's me too. That's what he did for me. That's, you know, that's what they meant to me. He said, this is the person that they are. This is what my life amounts to. Uh, and I want to help inspire, encourage and help people find their purpose and passion for life and to begin to be able to really pursue it with all of their heart, soul, and mind. I said their physical, mental, and emotional health. And I really think it all begins, begin understanding yourself with, you know, fitness and running and health, because the easiest way to challenge yourself is physically. It is so difficult to be honest with yourself and challenge yourself mentally and challenge yourself spiritually if your physical life is just out of whack. If you're just unhealthy, if you're lazy, uh, if you're overweight, if, you know, you quit things easily, you're a procrastinator. Uh, And these are things that I, I am, you know, have, am susceptible to and have struggled with. So this is not me calling out any specific person, but myself, uh, undisciplined, lazy, uh, excuses for everything, um, you know, just, you know, overweight, poor eating habits, poor emotional health, poor, um, relational health, poor spiritual health, you know, d- making excuses for everything. I said that already, but that's a big one is just making excuses for everything. If you stop making excuses, your life immediately will change like 180 because the, 
it literally has to. There's no other direction for it to go. If all you do is make excuses and you stop, everything starts to change because then you realize you have to take responsibility for yourself and your own life and you can either die or move forward in action. So that's what I want you to get out of this is not just learn some fitness tips or hear a funny story, but I want you to be inspired and encouraged to begin your own journey, to change your own life using the tools and the stories and the tips and the ideas and inspiration that you get from these, you know, let's call them conversations if you want to, um, of listen to me ramble on about these certain things. Um, but I want you to really use this information to begin making changes in your own life because you can listen to this while you're driving to work or while you're on a walk or, you know, wherever you may be listening to this. Um, but if you don't do anything with the information, then it's absolutely useless. I have so much information in my brain that I have remembered from countless podcasts and videos and conferences and sermons and meetings and all sorts of things that I probably didn't use or do anything with 90% of the information that I retain. Um, and, and that's my own dang fault. And I probably would have an even, I would be at an even better place in my life if I would have just done the things that I needed to do and, and use the information and tools that I had and the resources I had to its full extent, because I can look back on my life right now and look at opportunities and resources that I wasted, but there's no point in, in whining about the past because I can't do anything about it now, but I have learned now what to do when those opportunities present itself. And an opportunity has presented itself to you today when you're listening to this to use the information that you'll get from these ongoing conversations and everything that you can learn from this podcast to begin putting these steps in place to make changes in your own life. So that is what the Fittish Dad podcast is about. And the reason why it's fit-ish is because it's not some egotistical aesthetic crap about being ripped and shredded. I don't give two craps about that. Um, there's nothing wrong with that if you know you want to be just absolutely ripped and shredded, but that is not a picture or a snapshot of ideal health. Um, because I know people who on the outside are ripped as can be, you know, five percent body fat, all these different things, and then everything on their else in their life, like I wouldn't trade anything in my life to look like that, uh, to have their life just to look like that. It's just not worth it. But having a full rounded sense of health and, and value that you can provide to yourself and to your families, um, and to your communities around you, to your jobs, um, to your kids, whatever it may be, because the importance of becoming healthy and becoming strong individuals is not so that we can feel good about ourselves, but it's so that we can then do what is necessary for us to cultivate the people around us that we are responsible for, that for your spouse and for your kids and for your family and your friends and your community and everything that you're a part of that is relying on you to be your best self. This is to help encourage you to be able to do that because it's hard. It's hard work. Nothing about this is easy. It's simple, super simple, but simple does not always mean easy. And so you'll be able to get a lot of things from this that while they'll be simple, they're not easy to do because honestly, when it comes to fitness and when it comes to health and running and all that stuff in general, it's not complicated. People overcomplicate it because they feel like they have to complicate it in order for it, for you to take them seriously because, oh, they're an expert. So they would know, you know, but it's really not that complicated, but it's not easy to do, especially consistency consistently because consistency is the key but we'll talk about all of that in future episodes just wanted to keep it short and brief here today um as we get this first episode out really just excited uh to to go on this journey with y'all um so like and subscribe to the to the podcast to the channel 
And uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Caleb B for real. And uh, I also have a TikTok that I just recently started posting on. Uh, and it's it's a lot of the same stuff on my Instagram. So you can follow me on both or one or the other, whichever one you like more. Uh, it's also, I believe, Caleb B for real. Um, but go follow me on those. Like and subscribe this page. Check out any of the other content from me or any of the other creators through Thrive Media. Uh, they got a lot of good stuff, not just about fitness, um, but they've got just stuff about family. Uh, they've got gaming stuff, all sorts of good stuff. Keep yourself entertained and informed all at the same time. So you get that double whammy, which is always a great thing to get two for one. So super excited for this journey with you guys. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I said it's going to be a short episode. I'll average wise, I'll try to keep the episodes between 45 minutes to an hour, uh, maybe more or less, just depending on the topic. If I film one that's super long, um, I might split it up into two and that might mean one might be 30 and one might be 40, but you know, we'll see. We're, we're learning as we go. So super excited. Follow along. It's going to be a great journey. Uh, message me, comment below, uh, any questions that you have. Or if you're just excited, comment below. I love talking to people that actually listen to this stuff um, and get feedback and learn a lot through y'all. Love you guys. Thanks for joining. I'll check you next week here at the Fittish Dad Podcast.